100 down, 50 to go. It is Kyle Busch, Edwards Burton, Reagan Harvick, and look who's up in sixth position. After getting a lucky dog, getting back on the lead lap, Stephen Wallace doing a heck of a job in that 66 car. He's done a nice job all night. He's, he's driven the car to whatever the capabilities were at that time. When it wasn't handling the very best, uh, then he backed off a little. They adjusted, and now they've got him up in the top ten. Kyle Busch has just been so good on these restarts. These guys can't even really get to his bumper. They get down into here. This is where Carl has had a, a difficult time. This is where Kyle really kind of stretches it out. He goes through the corner so fast and carries that speed off the corner then, and that's the last they see of him. Joey Logano in the 20. That is for position as he goes down on the inside and goes by Stephen Wallace. Yeah, that's position you have to be really careful too. These cars get side by side down into the corner. Takes the air off of that car on the inside. Can get really loose in that uh, position. Split, or split David Green right here, three wide. David Green being shown one lap down back in 19th spot. Give a call to the 11 car, Scott Legacy. You see him there, the highest running rookie competitor right now. He's being shown in the top 10. This would be his first ever top 10 finish in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Vince. Well, Scott Legacy qualified 23rd, and he was very disappointed with that. They thought they had a much better car. In fact, he said it felt even slower than 23rd. He said, but hey, we'll look on the bright side. At least we can get the hard charger award. <laughs> he might just get it. He is having an outstanding run. Look at Brendan gone left side of your screen. He's headed to Vegas early. Look at that car <laughs> way up across the racetrack. He's been on pit road four or five times there on that last caution. Adjusted on this car. Looks like he's, he's done something to help it a lot. He's got this thing really working in this top groove. Yeah, don't look now, but Brian Vickers after that spins got back up to eight spot and trying to pass Joey Logano for the seventh. Vickers on the bottom. Here goes the Chevy of Brendan gone up high and they're squeezing up in front of Logano. That was two different lines in trying to pass Joey Logano. Wasn't Vickers down on the apron and Brendan gone up there right against the wall. That's what I love about this racetrack. It has so much room and so such a wide racing surface. And that, that's not wide enough. They use the apron. <laughs> 75 feet wide, this racetrack here in California, and a 15-foot apron. They're using all of it. Yep. Here we see the front of the field. There's Kyle Busch. He stretched out to almost a second and a half lead over Carl Edwards again. See Logano now trying to work that high groove. Yeah, he was getting past when he was running on the bottom and, and a lane up, so he decided to try something different. He saw Brendan Gone utilizing that. Shannon? Joey Logano right now is saying that that car is bad, bad, and tight. But you guys were talking a little bit earlier about how well Kyle Busch is doing here today. And of course, the teammate Joey Logano a little bit further back in the field. I spoke with Dave Rogers, crew chief for Joey Logano this week. He told me that they have a new approach coming into this season. He said last year he used to try to put Joey in the car with either Kyle or Tony Stewart setups. He said, this season, I'm gonna let Joey do what he wants to do. I will adapt the car for Joey. It is his ride. That's always the best approach, I think. Uh, you know, when you got a rookie driver, sometimes they don't really know what they're looking for. So you try to just lead them in the right direction and maybe put a setup that a veteran has developed. But uh, Joey's got enough experience now, knows what he's looking for in the car, and I think that's a good approach. And in fairness to him, last year, DJ, you know, he could focus totally on the NASCAR Nationwide car. Now he's uh, full-time in Cup, so he has to go back and forth. That's, that's got to be tough on anybody, particularly when you're 18 years old. Yeah, it is difficult, but uh, what they're trying to do is just get him seat time, and that's going to benefit him more. You heard him talk about his car is very tight right now. He's moved up the racetrack. It, running the bottom, you have to put more wheel into it. You have that tight condition that really slows the car down. So, you know, he's smart enough to realize when he has to move around and when his car is not working exactly right, move around on the racetrack to try to find some more speed. Just like Brendan Gaughan's doing, he's moving up way up the racetrack now, still working on Brian Vickers. Brendan Gaughan told me in the garage area yesterday, he said, I love this racetrack. I've won twice here in the NASCAR West Division. I finished second and third in the trucks. Brendan Gaughan finished fourth in the cup car here back in 2004. Yeah, on the left side of our screen there, we see uh, David Reagan taking away that third spot from Jeff Burton. David Reagan is a person, a driver that we've talked about is going to win this year, uh, whether it's in the Nationwide Series or the Cup Series or both. He's looking to get that first victory. My vote would be both. 
Yeah, I think, yeah. Very talented driver. See Brendan gone there working that high side still. That's Michael Annette in the 15 car. He right now is the first driver a lap down in the 16th spot. Michael doing a heck of a job in a backup car if you're losing their primary car and a wreck in qualifying. You can see right behind Brendan gone there is Joey Logano. He he moved up the racetrack after Brendan gone passed him and he seems to have picked up quite a bit of speed. Brendan gone uh, going home next week to Las Vegas. He will be our in race reporter. And uh, boy, if he can get his first uh, top five finish, he'll be pumped. He's already, he's pumped anyway. He's pumped anyway. I was down in the garage yesterday and talking to him. It's so much fun talking to him. I mean, he just has so much enthusiasm and appreciation for this opportunity that Rusty gets. We were talking about the paint scheme, how close it was to, to Rusty's uh, car there in those days, and uh, he was just so pumped about that. As we see this battle ongoing for the third spot, Jeff Burton trying to take it back from David Reagan. Tom Groove seems to be the, the way some of these guys are used to be able to make the pass uh, here in the late lap. Yeah, they're just looking for anywhere that their car will go fast. See, Burton, he was trying to make that pass down on the inside. But David Reagan's making that middle to top groove work a little bit better. See, he carried a lot more speed down the straightaway by utilizing that. The record for the most laps led here in the NASCAR Nationwide Series car is 144 by Kyle Busch back last August, folks. He has led right now all but three of the 110 She's laps. He can break his own record if he hangs on. Back in a moment. 